Hey, what's going on and good morning, everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and now we're going to be covering the back nine wind of the Pro Division Easter Tournament. So, very happy with how my opening round went. You know, I just hope I can duplicate this in the finals. That would be awesome. Finally picked up the eagle on hole number nine, uh, well, hole number 18. It's a very tough wind again, but missed the eagle on hole number one. So, you know, again, like I always say, you take the good with the bad, but let's go ahead and get this party started. Um, you know, if you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please take a moment there to like the video if you find my content helpful. So here we go. Hole number one. We're going to attempt the power shot again, uh, this time with an APOC. And I'll kind of show you what I'm looking at here. So I was just looking to get my blue ring dipping into the sand there. That's kind of like my setup point, right? So right there, blue ring in the sand, but then the the left of my white ring, I wanted fully on the fairway. So kind of like by the rough line, but all the way on the fairway. Because on my other account, um, I just barely missed the shot that I was going for. Now, I want you to note here that I'm not going with full overpower, but I am going with full curl to the right. And um, I am trying to hit a perfect ball. Now, I hit a great shot to the right. which actually ended up helping us out, okay? So a perfect ball would have probably been, you know, maybe in the rough. I mean, I would have still buried the hole, but we were looking to get a big advantage here. And we're using a Titan because of the tailwind. So ultimately, what do we want to do here with our Apox? We want to move this over even more, right? So we want to move our target even more over to the right and, uh, you know, try to hit perfect. So again, if we had moved our target over to the right, we, we would touch down further over here as we're looking at it to the left of the screen, right? So closer to the left-hand side bunker, we would have touched down. And then we wouldn't have clipped this up here. Now, we barely clipped this, right? But that's with a great shot to the right. So if we don't clip that, we roll really far up to the fairway, leaving us with a chip-in shot. But like I said, I didn't pick up the eagle on either account. But that's okay because we're going to be able to uh, still talk about shot number two. This is 20% elevation. I just ended up missing it. Hit a great ball. That's not going to do us any good when we hit a great ball. That's okay. We have a lot of drops to talk about now, starting off with this one right here. We're going to play this one 25% at mid-distance with our club with an offset. Take a note here, the backspin, 4.1 bars of backspin. And here's what we're looking for, ultimately. This will be really easy to follow. Take a note here how part of my white ring is dipping into the sand. But most importantly, let's take a look at the ball guideline. Notice how that first bounce is kind of in the corner of that light green square, bottom left-hand side. But the easiest thing to reference is the end of my ball guideline, where the tip is. We're kind of right up against the edge of that dark green seam, okay? So dark green seam is what we're looking at. And here we're going to go ahead and make that 25% pull at mid-distance of our club. And we get that ball to drop into the right-hand side of the hole for a nice hole-in-one. So we'll do it again real quick. We'll just take a look at it. Right there's our setup point. We got that ball guideline going right up against the dark green row. We can even move that, move that over a smidge to the left because we do drop this ball right-hand side of the cup for a hole-in-one. Okay, hole number three, not a very good hole for me. I mean, I pick up the eagle. But both my drives did the same thing. Again, here, I'm using a Titan ball. Uh, just because we're getting that tailwind push, we're going to go as much top spin as possible, combined with as much right side spin as we can. Here, we're just making our pull. And as you can see, I'm taking a slightly overpowered shot, but I do hit a great ball to the left. On both of my drives, I hit great balls. Um, they clip the rough and they roll out, kind of something like this. Not a big deal. You can easily get there with uh, the sniper club. 
Now this one I played 10% elevation. I played it at mid distance. Uh, now of course, you know, this is gonna be solely dependent on your drive. You might be taking this with a Grizzly if you're a Grizzly player. You could be taking this with a sniper like me. You could be taking a shot with a Goliath. Um, you know, you're gonna have to check your own distance of your club, whether you're at minimum, mid or max, or somewhere in between. You'll just have to have your own reference spot. But here the shot's not really close. You know, I kind of fall down the fairway or the green and roll down. All right. Hole number four, pick up two hole-in-ones on this one. This shot plays really nice. It's one of my favorite holes uh, to pick up hole-in-ones on. So here we go. You're going to notice the spin here, 2.1 back. One side spin to the left with the navigator. We're going to have two reference points here as well. The first one is the blue ring. The top of the blue ring needs to be up by the fringe line, okay? Kind of like that. You see that? Just an itty-bitty amount of separation there. You can be right up against it. That's okay. Now, the second thing that we're looking for is going to be our offset spot, which is right here. So you can kind of take a look at where the end of the ball guideline is and what everything is doing. Perfect ball. And we hit dead center for the cut for the hole in one. This was actually my first attempt at the shot. I kind of went backwards here. Now you'll see I sneak this one into the, I think into the left-hand side of the hole. But anyways, again, blue ring at the top of the fringe there. You kind of see the ball guideline, what, what we're doing here. Yeah, I snuck it into the left-hand side of the hole. That's why I moved it over to the right-hand side a little bit. All right, this one takes us into hole number five. Hole number five, I don't have anything special to show you, so I'm kind of I'm kind of gonna burn through this one. I don't like this hole in pro, really don't like it. Period. But here you can go with as much top spin as possible. You can go with a couple bars of right side spin, ten percent elevation pull. We're just gonna fast forward through some of this stuff because shot number two here, um, I played the rough bump on one account. All right, and I must have missed pulled because I actually hit the rough and rolled into the sand. I saved the hole. On this shot here, you see I'm caught in between clubs. Goliath, sniper, Goliath, sniper. So I can't set my Goliath up there. That's not a good rough bump. I can't set my sniper up there because I won't be able to pull my rings and adjust the shot. So I just have to lay up onto the green, all right, for a birdie. So we'll, now we'll go on to hole number six where we pick up an albatross. You can see here I'm only using six bars of top spin, two bars of side spin to the right. Uh, that's because I don't want to go too long on this hole. I'm killing this shot with the sniper, so I want to continue to take it with the sniper. I got my orange ring kind of up against that rough line where those trees are. Here, this is again a 10% pull at max. Hit a great ball, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. As long as we land on this fairway, the second shot is easy to set up. This is shot number two. I'm going to play at minus 5%. For me, I'm at mid. You might hit a perfect ball and get more yards, and you might be at minimum. You might, you know, use more topspin or whatever. So just make sure you know where you're at on your own sniper club. This is about 2.3 bars of back, two side spin to the right. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I, I went heavy with the back spin there. So, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm at 2.9 back, two right. 2.9 back, two right. But that's just for me on where I'm at on my distance. You might use less backspin. You might use a little bit more. The most important thing is just have that ball guideline set up into the hole on this wind angle. Perfect ball. And there we go. Center of the cup for the, for the albatross. Okay. This is another one where I don't have anything for you. So I'm just going with the basic ball. I do not like this rough bump. Period. Uh, whatsoever. I'm definitely not going to play it in this wind angle because I'm having a really good round, right? So I'm not going to ruin a good round by picking up a par. Now, if this, was the final, if this is the final round of the tournament and I really need to make a shot to get into contention, then yeah, I would gamble on it. But for here, I'm just going to take, you know, I'm on pace for a minus 30. So I'm just going to keep that going. And that's what I hit. At least that's what was my thinking during the process, right? Here we're going with that power shot again. So extra mile. Here's what I'm looking for based off my first miss on my other account. Notice here, I got about half the blue ring on the dark rough line, 
half the blue ring, and the lighter rough line. That's my setup point. This is a full OP shot. This is a full slice with our extra mile. I'm not taking the shot with the APOC. We'll go back and look at the spin as well. I believe I was at like two bars of right side spin for sure. Probably a little bit more than two back spin. There you go. Yeah, 2.1 back, two right. Half the blue on the dark rough, half the blue on the light rough. Oh, this one's frustrating. I played this one 10% at mid. This is a pretty strong wind. Um, but, you know, this is one shot we like to get back. It was a little bit of a weird setup. So I have to go really heavy with the backspin on the Embringer, which is never fun. But you can see here I've got my ball guideline going, like, through the pin. I pulled this 4.6 rings. So I pulled this 10% at mid. And leave the ball right to the left-hand side. So if I had to pull that 15% at mid, that ball would have been in the cup. All right, hole number nine, back-to-back -back headwind, okay? Full top, two right, berserker. We're going to back our target up so that we can pull our rings appropriately. And I'll make sure I push back up to max to get every yard that I can. I'm going with quite a bit of overpower. It's not full, but it's close. You know, the thing that we don't want to do is shank this drive and end up in the rough because then we would be really uh, dangerous, <coughs> excuse me, for... Um, picking up the eagle. It's hard enough already. Hey, I hope you're finding this helpful. I hope you kick butt in the finals. Please smash that subscribe button and that like button for me. And let me know how you do in the comments too. I love replying to things. I like seeing the success stories. But here we're going with full top spin, a couple bars of side, or yeah, full top, two bars of right side spin, so I thought. And we're just trying to get this ball onto the green or onto the fairway. Here you can see I'm not using any overpower. Slight right curl, just barely. Um, I could have taken a little top spin off this, I guess. It's hard to read your ball guideline on a cataclysm, but we roll, we roll, we roll, and we leave that for a chip in shot for the Eagle. Good luck, everybody. I hope you do awesome. I'll see you in the finals because of volleyball. My schedule is going to be way behind. I'll be putting out a lot of content.